recording. Welcome everybody to the Monday, May 22nd meeting of the OC developer team. Now we're shifting up to Jitsi here. It's I read online that it's supposed to handle more than 10 people. What I'm observing here right now is that we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. 11 already so this is good uh, this is more than hangout but we're gonna need to figure out our infrastructure for running meetings effectively um, when we get to more people and we can actually consider running multiple meetings and I'm actually gonna propose that that we actually start breaking down the the, the team meetings to different projects so um, let's see so make sure you're looking at this document right now so I'm pasting a link in the chat box which is the chat link I have an issue with the sound since I opened Jitsi. Cam doesn't work either. Huh. Okay, well, uh, whoever cannot see this, this will be recorded. So Abraham, okay. Abraham, if you can't... Yeah, the recording is there. But this is the working document for today. We go along an agenda. First thing, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, live stream, share. Where's my share screen? There it is, up on top. Share my screen. So you can see my entire screen here. And I'm looking at the D3D meeting agenda for today. The working document, please take a look at that. It's the link inside the, the Jitsi Hangout in the window. Click on the upper left-hand side. There's the chat box that you can see there. Uh, so please go right ahead and take a look at that. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. I'm looking at 12 people. This is good. Uh, the, apparently, Jitsi is limited by bandwidth only. So hopefully this works. And if, if you're having trouble hearing this, uh, please go to the recording after this meeting. So let's let's start today then. We're going to keep the meeting rather short and just go through the the critical things. We try to get the, the new people on board. So first of all, welcome to Joseph, Abraham, Oliver, and Dixon. Dixon and Joseph from the United States. Abraham from Spain. Oliver from Germany. Welcome to you all. And I see, so Oliver has been doing some replication work already. Okay, so what we do typically during these meetings is follow the agenda. And I, I didn't have so much time to prepare today, but, but there are a few things that uh, we want to talk about for, for how we collaborate. And of course, what we're doing here is pushing the limits of, of how we can work together as a distributed team. Because the beautiful thing is, um, you know, like the Linux development project close the door we're trying to to make make a collaborative development method for hardware work on a larger scale that's a very interesting proposition that is kind of like the future economy a lot you know the writing on a wall that we're following as far as the context for what we do is that in the future the economy will be much more collaborative or we're kind of going to collapse as a civilization um, there's exponent people talk about exponential technologies you know more is capable with less and so forth but unless people change as as people you know we're if we're going to be foolish as people you know we're never going to survive as humanity so um, we're trying to create an alternative here I was actually just recently listening to you guys may have heard of the resource-based economy concept from Pete, Peter Joseph. He's actually an interesting person to come in contact with. But the idea here is that um, we're working on a different system. For us, it's about a particularly different system of production in general that we're trying to develop. And, and as we develop the products here, we also develop various enterprises that pave the way for a future where people pursue their passion as their full-time endeavor. So you might have seen me on Facebook, I posted, um, if you love what you do, then uh, Confucius said something like, if you uh, love, if you do what you love, then that's the last day you, you ever have a, you know, if you do what you love, you, you don't have a job, it's, it's your passion. And that's the kind of thing we're, we're trying to, to do here. But anyway, that's some of the philosophical underpinnings the relevant thing is product, open source product development leads to open source collaboration, open source economies and altogether so that uh, as the 
technology expands in the future, losing jobs is a good thing. It's like people start pursuing passion instead of uh, working for others, and etc. That's like a big point. I've been thinking about that quite a bit lately, and it's something that's definitely uh, written on the wall as far as where the future is going is that most people are going to be unemployed and the future is going to be beautiful because then people can produce more locally they can do the things that they like because right now we have so much technological production capacity that you know we can survive and thrive ridiculously easy but it's the systems that get in a way the various systems that are uh, not serving people's needs whereas the technology itself it can provide that all for everybody so that's the kind of general framework we work in. But here, humbly speaking, we're developing right now uh, some of our priorities. Um, so let me go go back to. I'm going to go through the back to the agenda and uh, try to follow that. So that's a brief introduction here. I'm just going to remind people on point number two on the agenda to f fill out the feedback form. There's only about five people that have filled it out. I'm looking for about five more responses. So please, if you haven't go to the feedback form which is on page page four of the presentation here so that's that um, so for the new people and for everybody let's let's back up a little bit to the development process and burn burn down of the project and um, so that's slide number two I'm gonna refer back to you know for more perspective I'm gonna go to slide two and three which I just shifted but slide two is our development template this is what we do for every machine and everything that we do uh, and right now the 3d printer torch table filament extruder for making plastic for 3d printing those are the three project we're working projects we're working on um, so development template you can see that link on the wiki but what we do all the time is we do design work so so all the steps on top here are the design then we go into the bill of materials and then build but uh, throughout this process, which you've seen, I mean, for people that have been around for the last 12 weeks since we started, um, and I'm going to go back to what we, the since we started, look at page one. This is what we started. We're, we're building our team here. Right now we've got, um, so I'm, I'm pointing specifically to the, the active development effort here, but this is where we are right now, about... Fifth, so so what we're seeing here is the number of people that, which is in blue which means that every week I mean so far we've had at most 10 people log their contributions that's the that's the timesheet that you can click on that everybody's supposed to uh, fill out but we've had 10 people at most fill out their timesheets right now the last day here that's because people haven't filled it out but we're kind of hovering at about 10 contributors that are actively logging and about 140 130 150 hours per week so that's like um, you can say if a 40 hour week is what it is that's up to four full-time equivalent people working on a project in terms of the development team uh, as far as all the, the volunteers that are working with us here just just for your reference but it's critical that you fill out your timesheet because that you we log that so if you want to start a chapter in the future if you want to start uh, running your own team you have to go through the the hours of training and, and performance in the project so you got to log if you want to kind of advance with the project because because a lot of the next steps in the project are based on how how much you've been on a team and how much you have logged in terms of development hours but that's that as far as the development template here design process we've been going a lot over the last 12 weeks through th primarily 3d cad so um we've broken down the 3d printer into different modules we've done a lot of 3d cad work there's a lot of detail in terms of um, what the design design work entails, but I won't get into too much detail here. I'll focus more on the general process. Then we go to the bill of materials as the next major step. We've done the, the technical bill of materials that allows people to replicate uh, the machine for the 3D printer. We've done a visual bill of materials somewhat, meaning hyperlinking parts and in, in editable Google Docs. Uh, Computer-aided manufacturing files is number 17. That's really the 3D print files. We've done a lot of 3D printing of, to, to build the machines. And then cut lists are another thing, but I'm just kind of going through some of the general steps. As far as the build, what we're doing a lot right now is doing the build instructionals. So build instructionals is 20, but we're getting more specific on that. Uh, we've just basically started on fabrication drawings recently, the fabrication drawings that come out of FreeCAD. We've done some visual fabrication diagrams, um, meaning how parts 
come together. Like for example, Abe has been working on a filament maker, doing some visual fabrication diagrams on that. We've done some exploded part diagrams. We did an excellent job on exploded part animations that for the workshop that we had those as instructionals. And now we're working on a language agnostic instructionals for very clear presentation of how you build the 3D printer. So anyone without even using a language can, can read that because it's all pictorial pretty much. Um, and then we work on parallel production engineering. Like as far as the build event goes, the way we, we do it all in one day is by parallelizing the process. So we have to develop a work particular workflow for that. So that's a brief thing on that. Um, and specifically where we are, so uh, as far as the 3D printer, what's the definition of done? This is the slide right here. It's you have the CAD work, the bill of materials, the actual build, we've built our 3D printers, data collection we still haven't done, instructionals we're working on, explore part animations videos we've done a good job on, we're working on a language agnostic instructionals. Uh, the next things coming up are, we want to have a build manual for the workshop, along with the publishable ebook, our language agnostic instructionals, and so forth. Uh, Jose is working on a workshop website. And that's major progress ha happening on there. Uh, we at at the end we're gonna teach you how to to do WebGL 3D embeddable files into the website or for the wiki, so you can manipulate instead of using FreeCAD, you can actually manipulate the stuff within the browser itself. So that makes it much easier. So we're gonna get into that. Um, then we're gonna start working on a part library, uh, and then. Finally, the, the ultimate step is a 3D printer construction set workbench within FreeCAD. So basically a, a workbench that allows you to pull down all our parts and, and create all kinds of variations of the 3D printer. Um, now the big thing about CAD standards is we're kind of struggling with that here a bit um, as far as the CAD standards go. But right now we have, we're kind of going back to organize all that we have at present point. So we have an index of parts. If you look at this, um, there's a page on a wiki, a D3D part library, and I added this. This is what I uh, made the video about. But right now, I know that Israel, for example, has been filling out some of this um, this big spreadsheet, which has all the parts. And then we're adding the CAD file link to all those parts so that it's this is like our master bill of materials slash CAD library links. And there's 40 parts here. That's all the individual parts of the 3D printer. They're detailed here. But then, after we have the parts, we go to the assemblies. And what we're going to focus now on is the final assembly, because we've got all the assemblies already done. Now, the next part is being able to manipulate all the assemblies so we can create all the different 3D printer variations. Like, we're going to the bigger printer, we're going to the torch table even, that, that's a little different. But various configurations, like we have all the different frame sizes, including the plastic, the PVC frame that IO was working on. Um, there's all this, uh, all the different configurations that we can build now as a team because we have the, all the assembly files, like the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, and so forth. So now we can start reconfiguring them into all kinds of um, machines and we can allocate a few people to do that pending some cleanup on this. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Uh, how do we clean up the final assemblies so that those are very easy to work with within FreeCAD as opposed to being very bulky in memory size. So that's one of the big, big things we're trying to work out here. Um, and I'm going to go briefly through. So so that's that kind of leads into the rest of the meetings here to the CAD standards. I'm going to talk about this. Um, but before we go there, I'm going to overview a little bit on. Now, I think I think we'll go into the CAD standards uh, right now, but right after. Yeah. What I'd like to do is, so we have the active developer, de developer logs on the development team log page. What I'd like to go through that real quick is I opened up everybody's log and, and I would like to propose this for the workflow as far as how we do the, so, so in some of the former meetings, we had the issue of us doing the scr scrum stand up throughout this meeting 
where people just present one page of this working document with the results of their work like each one each pe each person would uh, draw up a page for themselves i'm thinking we already have the work logs right so let's try to focus on the work logs as a thing where i can just click on this which is what i did i mean i do that anyway i go through everybody's log and you, you guys should be also encouraged to do so and what the new thing would be is try to like when, when i click on your log and just try to make it very clear from there like right up front this is what i did and this is what i learned maybe like right up with a date right on top so um let's see so I, I went through people's logs and look at this oliver in germany is already actually prototyping the d3d i noticed that's really cool like this is really clear i see okay wow okay he's clearly this is the work he's done excellent good stuff um so that's an example of a work log that we say yes great okay uh, next person i went to jose's log look at this he's working on a website and i'd like to get some feedback on that um, so this is some website work, um, let's see, Jose, um, building this website, which is essentially an open website that people can actually replicate. We're going to put the source code up online, but people want to run workshops. We have a, basically a template and of course we'll use it. We'll develop the website, but also we, we encourage people to replicate this website as well, because we're going to, um, basically provide a temp template for. Uh, putting all the critical things on there. Uh, Jose, you want to pipe in just for a second on this and, and just tell us some, some inspiration and progress on that? Are you, let's see, are you on? I can't see who's uh, who's on. Jose, are you on? Hmm. Jose, speak up if you can, because we can't hear you. Oh yeah, Jose, I, I see you there. Jose, um, can you pump pump to us what uh, some of the progress on the website can't hear you though I don't know if you're muted or not Jose going one two three he says Martian doesn't have a, a microphone oh. Oh, okay I see Oh, laptop broken. Okay, but Jose is uh, working on the website, so that's awesome. I mean, this when I saw this, it's pretty cool. Good stuff, so keep going. And we can communicate afterwards on this, so we'll close that down. Uh, but definitely a good website for the 3D printer, meaning where you can actually sign up. Like, for example, the map idea here is that if you want to have a workshop run in your location, you put you basically sign up, and once we see enough people, like, for example, New York City or Germany or someplace, if we see like 12 people or 24 people wanting a workshop in some location, we'll just take it there. So that's marketing. That's that's good stuff. Uh, basically finding where people want to have the workshop run because we'll go wherever pe there's people, um, a client base to, who wants to make, make 3D printers. Okay, that's on a, on a website. Um, continuing uh, is, um, let's see, this is Cedric. He's been working on... Um, a lot of the stuff on around the extruder of the 3d printer um cedric you want to pipe in on the update because i haven't really seen um not sure what there's um there's roberto cedric part library works i know some work has been happening along uh doing the index of parts here whoops Oh, sorry, people. Where'd I cut out? Okay. Um, no, I'm I'm trying to... Sorry, I cut out there. Sorry, uh, I'm back here. Let's see if I can do this again. So, yeah. So as far as the, the meeting itself here, the, the basics of what we need to get accomplished during a meeting is to allocate roles and, and make pro progress happen but what i would propose actually right now since we're we're going out of control with our numbers here which is good uh, i suggest that we divide the meetings up to like maybe today we discuss everything regarding the 3d printer work and i would like to propose that that we actually have a second meeting and maybe start doing it that way since i think it's kind of getting too many people uh, for one meeting maybe do the second meeting on a on a torch table 
and on an extruder on like a Tuesday or something like that. So that that would be my proposition right now, um, as far as what we do for uh, managing basically everybody's workflow here. So, uh, how are people with that? You want to just put in a chat box? Is like for example, uh, would that be a good idea to to divvy up the team and then have half the people show up on uh, like regarding the language agnostic instructionals and the work left over on a 3D printer and then some of the new people working on a torch table, which will be a smaller group. I think most of the people would remain on the a 3D printer, but start s splitting up into a new group where we can have more focused discussion on, a, on a other things. So, okay, so we're back. Um, yeah, it will give more focus to the meetings, that's true. Um, so, so let's kind of roll with that work group specific meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would, would 11 a.m. work for people at the same time or do we want to make it noon? I would prefer maybe noon or 11. I, I'd say 11. Um, 11 is good. Either. Chaz, would you make it at... You're working on a torch table work, so maybe Chaz, are you okay at 11 or you have to do 12? And for other time zones too, yeah, except, um, okay. Yeah, other time zones, except we got the, the people from Europe, so we got to do it like morning or not too late in the afternoon so that everybody, um, everybody can make it. Okay, but so let's go back and so it looks like we can divide. So I'm, what I'm going to call for is tomorrow at 11 a.m. We're going to have a meeting on the filament extruder as well as the CNC torch table work so now the question is what are people doing and I know we've got a little backlog of documentation and so forth and and organizing the CAD files so what I'll do right now is I'll go through the the main thing about the CAD standards and then we can talk about role division so regarding CAD standards we have the index of parts and that is this page here, the large spreadsheet with everything in there. Uh, starting from the individual parts, which is 40. And that's the beauty, only 40 parts, no more than that. Then the assemblies and the final assembly. So what I'm going to claim is that the focus at this point should be on the final assembly. And that is because the sub-assemblies we already have. Now, doesn't mean that there's not some cleaning to be done in the sub-assemblies, but I think the biggest part that can be done in parallel right now is to create the final assemblies, basically what, um, simplify what that means in order for us to do final assemblies, which means the entire machine, so the complete printer, up to the cable chain, which we haven't really put in the cable chain into the machine. but. For getting up to the final assembly, what we want to do is take the, the sub-assemblies. So in the index, we have 12 assemblies. So that's after the 40 individual parts. There's the 12 assemblies. X, Y, Z axis, extruder, heated bed, cable chain, controller, power supply, spool holder, frame, PVC frame. Um, those are the assemblies I'm, I'm looking at right now. But the main brunt of the work revolves on one through four, which are all the axes, making sure they're correct. Okay, but what we have to do there, and I'm going to um, shift to the right here. On the right-hand side of this entire uh, spreadsheet, if you look here, as we look at the file size, so we first of all put in the fi file, then we create a simplified file, and then we note what the size is, and then, but the, okay, column number F here, I'm going to highlight that with with red. That is the critical thing we want to work on if we talk about the overall assemblies for building the fur the further versions of D3D 3D printer. Now, what's the deal here? We have a complete assembly file for the 16-inch machine. We have a semi-complete I think Jose was working on a 12-inch version, 12-inch frame version. And that needs, I think, a little bit more work to get to optimize the space. And then we worked on an 8-inch, which is pretty much complete, though it needs to be updated. 
and then we don't have any other sizes like for example the new sizes that we have come first from the nested frame cutting with CNC like we when we cut the 16 inch frame we cut the stuff from the inside which is 13 inch then it's 10 inch and then it's 8 inch so we're actually getting four frame sets out of a single flat sheet cut so we've got all these variations and plus whatever other people are going to want to do we want to enable that they can readily um, you know because we're doing a construction set we want to enable anybody to readily modify the sizes of these these axis elements so that they can compose their own printers like for example io if you do the pvc frame or any other frame like i know that uh, for example manual is interested in doing a wood frame we can modify the the thing in cad readily okay so because the the xyz axis files are getting heavy and okay so let's take a look at click click on the x axis simple what's their memory size well right here it's uh, even the simple d3dx axis is um, almost a megabyte if you look at here um, so that's getting heavy that's going to add up to a, a rather heavy file that's just one axis out of many parts um, we want to keep the memory low so what's the idea here so i'm going to go back to here two things you can do are to strip away parts and to simplify the parts okay so we can take this file, even what we call here the simple file, which is already a megabyte, and simplify it even more. How do you do that? Well, one thing is you can take out any parts that are not really necessary for you to, to work with that, with that assembly. So for example, while we simplify, like we took, already took out the bolts, that's one thing we can take out. And then you, you can go, so I'm going to go to the Universal Access wiki page to show you what else can be simplified. So there's the Universal CNC Access page. And here's uh, some pictures of it loading up. But take a look at that. There's a bunch of stuff, the guts of this entire, so this is the axis, uh, x-axis exploded. Well, I can tell you right now that just about anything that's internal, strip it out. Get rid of the, the bearings get rid of all the bolts um get rid of the uh, a lot of these uh bolts on a stepper motor you have to go basically through each through this whole thing just take everything out that's just not needed and then then reduce the the file size so that's one one step second step is simplify parts okay well for example take a look at the the complex uh, 3d printed pieces if our goal is to rapidly manipulate within CAD for new assemblies of the final machines. We don't, the only thing we need about these end pieces is that they're really these blocks. You can actually convert these into just a, uh, a rectangular block and forget about all the detail. Why? Because that's gonna be sufficient for you to, to use that as long as you have the exact dimension of the block, so it's XYZ block, uh, make that make that into a single block and then use the rods then use the the middle carriage and then the other block but just totally block it block it and simplify it like the like the stepper motor you can even make that into a block get rid of all the curves on it and so forth because that all takes memory the idea here is you got these super super light files that now within FreeCAD it takes you minutes to create new compositions because there's going to be a lot of because there's a lot of these parts you know there's all the different axes and all the different different other components especially like the cable chain which is the cable chain is probably going to be like half the memory of the entire ma machine you know so so we got to simplify so that that'll be the task and now in order to have any good direction on this this really needs um a detailed walkthrough of how to how to do that so for every part like for example we can take um within our within our big spreadsheet here we can take each one of these parts and we can go through a list like of 10 or 20 points we can say okay get rid of um you know get rid of the bolts turn the end piece into a simple block and so basically go through all those steps for each each um each each item so that's a task that we can parallel on readily what we can do here is therefore create a document where we have a bunch of people just basically taking each of those assemblies and stripping out everything and actually redrawing like if you simplify the part you can't just take out a part from that you have to redraw that as a block for example so there's some drawing and some taking things out 
And what that's going to allow us to do once again is, is the quick readily modeling kit for the, the 3D printer with the 5 16 or 8 millimeter uh, rods that we have right now. So that's one task. We can get several people on that. Like, I mean, there's 12 parts. Shit. Ah. <laughs> I was... I'm glad to report that I was talking to myself for some time. Where did I... Where did I cut out? Sorry, people. Um, where did I lose you guys? The last uh, ten minute, uh, five minutes or so. <laughs> last five minutes or so. Sorry, yep. I was. Uh, I love talking to myself. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, so let me back up a little bit. Okay, what you can do actually is maybe review this. Um, one thing you can do is review this fully, but I'm going to go briefly through what I said. We do two things. So the goal is to strip down, to repeat this, there's assemblies 1 through 12. We're going to take each one of those and we're going to strip them down and simplify them so they're very small manageable files that can be used readily to make other complete machines. Because what we're seeing is once we use these 12 even in their simplified version, we already have the simplified version without bolts, because bolts take a lot of memory. Um, we're stripping down and removing parts and simplifying so that the final assembly can be done readily and it could be fun because it's fast. You don't have to wait for you know like a minute for something to load up. It's just a real pain, and that's with uh, that's that's good in general because if you if you completely put in all the detail to any design you're going to get weighed down at some point that's not, not just a feature of using FreeCAD which might be so-called less powerful it's not it's it's that we got to manage the memory size effectively and at this point we're ready to strip down the assemblies into their bare minimums so what needs to happen though and and, and uh, right now what we can do is basically divide this into many different people and we need a deep for each of the 12 items we need a detailed list of which parts are we going to strip away and which parts we're going to simplify so that's to be done I don't have that right now uh, we can start right on that right after the meeting but um, what we need to do during this meeting is to allocate a few people to that task and maybe that's a decent task for uh, new people but the new people who are more tech savvy uh, I'd like to get new people on a CNC torch table because um, the big point we want to start on so this is the priorities here so language agnostic instruct instructionals for the 3d printer we're still doing that we're doing but I mean along this we're doing the file management so that's what we're doing right now the file management the simplifying the assemblies uh, so that we can make really nice uh, final assembly instructionals the file management is going to allow us to do the language agnostic instructionals effectively for the, the complete assemblies because that's going to be kind of painful if we have those big files uh, and we're trying to do the language agnostic instructionals out of those. Okay, priorities. Second priority is the filament maker, which we're working on, and the CNC torch. So those are the three big things. The thing we're adding to the CNC torch that needs to happen is a height sensor, just like we have a height sensor on the 3D printer that detects how, how high the build platform is. We're going to need a height sensor on the torch, and that's going to be different. That's going to be a capacitive, capacitive height sensor, and that's going to allow us to follow the metal if the metal is curved or whatever. Uh, but that's a thing that we need to do, and that's that's a high tech thing. I was thinking first thing is like Oliver, man, that's you can do that. Uh, but let's let's um, let's get a team around that. So th those are the things. Chaz is working on control with external stepper drivers, and then we want to use the larger stepper. Let's, sorry, the larger 3D printed pieces for one inch rods. So we're going to supersize the rods to one inch now instead of eight millimeters. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use bolts, not magnets, to hold that up. So let's go to roll division and see where we are. So this is kind of like the bottom line of this whole thing, roll division. So new people here, we've got Oliver, uh, two Olivers, one Oliver, Abraham, Joseph, and Dixon. So Dixon. Um, uh, I would, I would claim, I would claim that I would want to allocate Oliver on a CNC torch table. Um, 
possibly Abraham, because I know you guys have decent, uh, kind of more familiar with technical stuff. You guys have built 3D printers and other machines already, actually. Joseph and Dixon, maybe we could get you going on, um, on a file manipulation stuff. That's actually a good exercise there. Abe's doing the filament extruder still, and I, I want to check in where that, where he is. Myself, oh, I'm doing nothing. No, I, I'm going to work on, so actually I've been doing a lot of work on, uh, the utilities for the CD Eco home last week, but I'm really shifting towards the back to the 3D printer. I'm going to work on a 3D, 3D print cluster, meaning taking the several machines that I've built already here and make them all work and perfect the print quality. Uh, so I'm going to work on a 3D print cluster because that's how I'm going to, like, I'm not, um, I would like to have all the parts printed using our new print cluster, not the Lulzbot minis that I've been using. Those are the commercial open source 3D printers, the Lulzbot mini I've been using for the last workshop to print all the parts. This time, because we dog food and we got to do this, we got to use our own print cluster because that shows that we're actually developed a working machine. So that's a proof proof of concept that we're actually now printing parts for the next workshop, just like we're going to encourage any of you to replicate workshops. You know you have a machine that works. Okay, so um, that's me. Lashlow. Um, Lashlow is going to relate it. It's work related to the la language agnostic inst instructionals, but I, I've talked to him. We talked about the last step of the FreeCAD workbench to actually do the 3D printer construction set. Uh, we might get him on that. Uh, Roberto, Frank, Jose's website, Cedric. Cedric's kind of up in air. I don't know uh, what's up there with um, maybe able to allocate him. Michelle, no, not, not Michelle. Michael and Jean Baptiste. I haven't heard a lot lately. And Io Cassie in Israel. Uh, we, yeah, we're working on the file organization. So here, um, what I want to do is there's 12 roles for the basically the assembly simplification. Um, so I'm going to put a team for the assembly simplification, which is going to lead to the better ability to make the language agnostic instructionals for the full machine. So here we go, assembly simplification. Now, um, so Mark, yeah, go ahead. Access? I don't know if everyone has access to the document. Oh man. public on the web. Anyone can edit. Okay, so this is a, a collaborative exercise here. This document is now open to everybody, including the world. Now, you 12 people on this call, go in there and drag your things to where you want, what you want to do. So we know, so I'm kind of going to do a CNC torch table team. So drag and drop those things by where you want it. Who wants to do assembly simplification? Um, I think I'm going to drag you over there. I'm dragging you over there. Jose's working on the website, so we're not going to disturb him. So you can, you can drag and drop within a document. Go in there, please. Uh, and if you don't, if you don't have the document, here it is. Oh, wait, is it still problems with, with the edit? So I just typed in. We need to refresh it. I'm good. Yeah, you probably need to refresh. I, I just shared it with the whole world, so you should be able to get in there. But I'm going to call for um, Abraham and Oliver. I want you on a CNC torch table if you if you don't mind. And I think you guys are both hungry for that. I know at least, at least Abraham is hungry for the CNC torch table because he wants to build in Spain. He wants to create a new economy there. That's what he told me. Um, so I'm going to put you guys there. Dixon and Joseph, um, go ahead. Jonathan, March, and I'm just staying with the print cluster here, but I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to have to go seed that assembly simplification there myself as far as listing a very concrete set of steps, s items, like checkoff, checkoff points for each assembly as far as what we have to do on each assembly. And once we pretty much have the X, that applies to Y, Y1, Y2, and Z. And then we, we talk about the other assemblies, how to simplify them so they're really rapidly manipulable. Um, Joseph, are you on a call? Joseph, let's see. Abe, Oliver, Abraham, Cassie, Joseph, yes, he is. Jonathan is. Uh, do you guys like type in your names here? Like, do you see, when you see me, what do you see? 
Oh, you see Marchin. How does it know your name? Did you have to type in your name somewhere? Yes, if you do the chat box, or uh, you can put in your name. Open and show the, the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know, see where you put your name in, but... Uh, oh, you... Sorry, the top, top left, set your name display. Oh, set, oh, okay, sure. Excellent, excellent. Awesome. Thank you. Well, this is good. There's 12 people, so we know this can handle more than 10. This is good. And we, we, we kind of have to test out the limits of this because we're, we might have to go to another platform uh, if, if we need more people. But this is looks like it's relatively decent. Um, okay, so back to the document here. Um, Chaz, Abraham, Oliver, are you guys good to continue on that and meet tomorrow at 11 a.m.? Yeah, I can meet tomorrow at 11 a.m. Excellent. Abe. Um, yes. Abe, can you do tomorrow so we can talk about the extruder a little bit? Uh, yes, I can do that. That would be great. So we can kind of get more organized on that. The extruder is a big thing because that allows us to, to make our own 3D printing filament. Uh, Abe, can you just report to us briefly, like, how do you feel about what's the, what's the status of that? Um, just so everybody knows. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Uh, I got to... Um, let's see, yeah, it generally I've been going down my log, but I thought about that more and I did a little summary on my log for today. Um, the I'm nearly finished with the, uh, the winder portion. I think there's probably some more links I could add to the whole extruder on the visual build materials, but um, the only hang-ups I've had are just there's some discrepancies between Lyman's documents in the, in the PDF as far as the the bomb list as well as he kind of changed it as he went I mean there's a little difference in photos but I think there's some parts that may have been deprecated in his final version or something so I'm trying to figure that out but some of that's not as critical probably the main way to figure out some of the questions and documentation with the operation of the machine itself is simply we probably just have to build the thing and then experiment yeah. with it. I yeah. think that he tended towards uh, more manual operation where you just use the switches to turn on and off the heating element and then you probably had to heat that up yeah. with the temperature and the PID and then switch okay. on the motor at a certain point. So, uh, yeah, the build is going to be the critical determining thing. Like once we have all the parts, we can do it. But I think the, you know, if what what's the state of completion on that as far as the kind of the visual bill of materials like can we actually draw up a complete bill of materials at this point uh, I have all the parts listed in there okay and from from his bill of materials and I don't think I have all the links yet okay some of that uh, varied and some of the parts I was having trouble finding them in the the rest of his description and documentation so yeah. some of those he may have dropped there's there's a few discrepancies but I think all the important stuff uh, is is linked in there okay and I'm almost finished with it it may need some more links in yeah. the extruder too to different uh, sources for purchasing yeah but Hunt. most of the bolts and I think the the bearing parts are, are kind of obvious as long as the sizes are the same. Uh, there's probably some other little parts I can't figure out where they go yet because it's not in the description, or it's not in the diagrams. They're listed in the bomb, and then they're not listed in the diagrams. Okay. So the, uh, does anyone want to join Abe on that project? Because the thing is, um, we w the next step is after we kind of go through the complete uh, build instructions. So basically we took this open source design but as with any open source project it's like it's kind of random how good the quality of the documentation is whether you can replicate it so why we're doing that is part of it is we're replicating and, and doing better instructionals on how to do it. Now the next step would be to try to figure out a procedure because what I'd like to do actually here is get one of our people here uh, so I, I can work with somebody on site here um, or possibly even Abe if he's willing to come up here at some point. But but we can possibly, like the best thing to do would be to um, 
get the complete build procedure as detailed as we can so we can actually hand it off to someone who's a mechanic. And I can get a mechanic guy here actually, we've got a, a friend of ours here that can work on that, but the idea there would be, uh, you know, I can't do everything I'm working on the 3D printer, but, it, but if we can get a full uh, procedure that essentially think of, okay, I'm going to pass this on to a mechanic, would that mechanic have enough information to actually put all the pieces together? So that's the level of documentation we have to have in order to make this a success. And hopefully that the, the documentation is such that it's, you know, it, it considers enough of it that it's, uh, it's just a few days build. It's not like it doesn't draw out for a month. Because the idea is like if you have no plan, you just do it and, you know, it takes you a month to build something like this. But that's where documentation comes in. If you've got all the materials, you've got a clear procedure, then you shrink down the build to a day or a few days. And that's, that's what we do. That's how we operate here. Um, so the, the, the question there is to try to decipher the instructions that already exist and um, put together a procedure that can be done and you, know, you can kind of see that, oh yeah, I can do this in a much shorter time than a bunch of random uh, instructions. Because instructions may be, you know, wh however, whatever state they are in right now, uh, we know that they could be improved and, and so forth. So... Uh, is anyone screaming to join that team to actually work on, work with Abe on that, or or not really? Um, I, I would ask. Yeah, anyone anyone kind of scream out for that? I can help with documentation things. I'm open to that. Okay, okay, Cassie. So I'm gonna put you there with the filament extruder team there that would be good for someone who's just kind of starting yeah Cassie that would be good so basically the idea is that um, Cassie can you make the meeting tomorrow then at um, 11 11 a.m. tomorrow Cassie would you be able to make that sorry I was muted I will be at work at 11 tomorrow, um, and I don't think I will be able to make it. Okay. Okay. Um, what time do you get out of work tomorrow? Mm, three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe uh, would you mind just checking in with us, and we'll record the video. Maybe would you mind checking, you know, right. like maybe reviewing I'll catch that? Up afterwards. Yeah, catch no up problem. afterwards, and we can email after that but they'll, they'll be good I think we need a little more help because definitely the instructionals I mean they take a long time so so that'll be no problem. that'll be great okay so we got Abe and Cassie on that Chaz Abraham and Oliver so the, the question is on um, we know Chaz is good Abraham and Oliver if you guys are okay uh, can you just type in the chat box of Abraham and Oliver you, you both are good I know one of you said uh, said you're good, but I'm not sure who said what. Yeah or no? Bandwidth issues? Okay, let's assume that we're good on a, on that for tomorrow's meeting. Uh, we want to get moving forward on that. Okay, so. For the people uh, working on the files, basically there's a bunch of bunch of work to be done in terms of uh, stripping down the files to the minimum. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, so I'm seeing. I'm kind of questioning. So I/O. So, so simple frame for D3D. Jonathan and I/O. You guys are going to keep working that. Is that? Uh, Is it basically for the? Uh Instructionals, is that correct? Well, so IOS was working on a simplified frame for D3D, just basically plastic corners and a plastic frame to which we can stick the the axes. So you, you glue on the magnets to the plastic frame and then you can stick the frame, sorry, stick the, the axis pieces onto the frame uh, through those magnets. So that's that's one way to get like a really cheap frame without having you to get CNC cut metal. 
um, that needs to be drawn up but but the kind of like there's somewhat of a prerequisite there in terms of manipulating that effectively like I was having having trouble with manipulating the larger files that's why I wanted to go back to the simplification part so maybe if you guys can you know I would see the workflow there as okay work on simplifying all the all the, the assembly files and then moving on to that frame so that's that's kind of how yeah, I would see that's why I thought too that's yeah. why I thought so. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, do you want to dive in on that team too? You showed up today. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely have to catch up and, and do some research on that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I was thought that was uh, is that towards the? I'll look at more towards this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll get you in there for now. Let's see. So the question is, um, let's see, um, I'm looking at Israel here. Israel, are you on the team? On uh, Is, I saw you, Is, somewhere. Israel, so uh, can you speak up? Because <clears throat> I, I would yeah. like to, can you join the team on assembly simplification there? Because the one-inch universal axis, it kind of follows the, yeah. We can get right to the one-inch one inch universal axis after that, but I think we should see how the the simple simple axes look. And after we do the simple axes, we can go up to the simple one-inch axis, taking the, what we have right now. Um, because, yeah, yeah. What I would propose for the CNC torch table, we don't need the absolute gory detail of the axis, since we know how they already go together, uh, what we do need right now is the big, the final assembly work, which means simplifying the all the axes. Um, let's see, Israel, would you mind doing that there? Ah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, let's see, Israel. Would you be okay with that? Uh, I I missed it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I missed your question too. Yeah. No. Would you be okay with jumping on the simpli axis simplification team? So, because that actually will lead to the the one inch axis. Once you're familiar with how the the simple small axes should look, then you can copy that model for the larger version. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, so we got uh, you there. Was there a page for that project or that part of it? I'm going to send all of that after the meeting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a document that shows all the simplification steps for all the... I mean, the only thing we have is the big spreadsheet here, but we want to start a uh, simplified uh, document. I can actually probably uh, put the simplified links there where we have working documents where in Google Docs we have a working document where we show all the things that have to be done to modify the files to make them simpler and lighter. Um, yeah. So, but I'll send that, I'll follow up after the meeting. Now, next. Um, I want to touch back. So Dixon and Joseph, would you guys be interested in that unless you guys, you know, Dixon, I'm kind of thinking I would like to possibly have more people on a, on an extruder team because that's an important project. Yeah, oh, man. We're running into the limits of technology here. Okay. So, I want to touch ba back. So, Israel is good. Joseph and Dixon. I mean, um, any preferences? Because I'd like to see if you guys... I, I want more people on the filament extruder to tell you the truth because that's a big project. I think it's very important for kind of like the... 
the recycling part. I think that is. Uh, do you guys have a preference on on uh, assembly simplification versus working on instructionals for the filament extruder? Because we can get you going on either. I can work on instructionals for the extruder. That sounds great. Okay, and that was Dixon. Yeah, that was this is Dixon. Okay, Dixon, great. And then let's see, um, Joseph. Okay, Joseph here. I don't. Um, doesn't matter to me. I don't. I don't really understand what's involved. Um, yeah. For either, but I'm game for whatever you want to throw me into. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, we'll make that more clear as I uh, get you as we get you go all gone. Yeah. So now we have officially formed a nice little filament extruder team: Dixon, Joseph, Cassie, and Abe. And that means we're going to get those instructionals out. And as I said, what I'll do is the moment we are satisfied with those instructionals, I'm going to get our mechanic guy here and we're going to have him build the thing so we can start squeezing out printing filament. So that's going to be there's definite, um, definite value. I mean, what I was trying to, to do is actually for the next 3D print workshop, potentially, if we have a, an experimental or working version, we can have a workshop where we actually build the extruder as a second day of the 3D printer workshop. Thank you again. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to try to go for a second day, like when the next 3D printer workshop, which is now right now scheduling for the very end of June. If, we, um, if we're in good shape, we want to add that second day, which is the extruder build as a second day after the workshop. So that would be really cool. And we'll probably get more people to show up for the workshop. So that's, that's excellent. Um, so we got a nice team here. Okay, so as far as this team here, assembly simplification, so we've got uh, the team forming here. And Cedric, uh, can you pipe in to, as far as where you are, uh, can you join the assembly simplification team if we provide enough instructionals on what to simplify? Hello? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Beautiful, just beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna get going on that. Mm -hmm. We've got our posse on the assembly simplification, and let's see. So now Roberto and Lashlo. So let's see where you are. Oh, wait. Wait. Ah, Abraham and Oliver. Yeah, yeah. so Abraham, you haven't confirmed whether you're good on a universal controller, but I'm assuming you are, and we can follow up with that. Um, you want to type in whether you're okay with that on the controller there? Or was it answered already? Abraham... Um, yeah, it sounds like some, some little things. Okay, uh, let's go through the rest of the list. Cassie, Oliver... Chaz, Dixon is. I think we covered everybody that we have on a team here. Um, Abe, Io, Abraham, Cassie, Oliver, Chaz, Cedric, Dixon is. That covers it for who's on this call right now. As far as Roberto and Lashlo and Frank. Um, yeah. They haven't uh, made the meeting, but we can we can uh, potentially get those people involved in as well, because there's 12 of these assembly simplification items, and that after that point, we're going to be able to have the perfected files for the big assembly. After which, Lashlo can take that and make an assembly, uh, a separate uh, 3D printer build workbench within FreeCAD, so it's much simpler to do that. So that's really cool. That's that's lovely. Um, but that's that's about it for now as far as the role allocation. So what we need to do right now is uh, for the assembly simplification, uh, what I need to do is start the, all the documents and get you allocated to one of the documents for, okay, here's the, assemb the assembly right now, do all these simplifications. Okay, so that covers that. These people will be covered later. 
universal controller and CNC torch table team meeting here at 11 a.m. tomorrow uh, what's that and the extruder team meeting tomorrow so what we can do there is perhaps um, do like uh, let's do this people since we got the CNC torch table and the extruder I would say for 11 a.m. we start with the CNC torch table and the extruder team kicks in at 11.30. So if you guys want to be on both parts, you're welcome to join. But uh, let's do the CNC 11 a.m. So that, that means we're pretty much splitting into this team. Um, CNC torch table 11 a.m. And the extruder team uh, 11.30 a.m. Does that sound good? And Jose is working on a website. That's all good. And the other people will check in later. So um, the only thing to wrap up this meeting here. So we're kind of we have a procedure more or less defined for language agnostic instructionals. We are struggling actually on the formal procedure for doing that. So what I'm going to try to do this week is try to create a video summarizing what we know about the language agnostic instructionals already. But in the meantime, we have the all the steps regarding the assembly simplification which leads to the further language agnostic instructionals so there's <clears throat> plenty of work for everybody um, now last thing we do is uh, questions and answers I don't know if we can do that uh, typically we do the, the questions within uh, the meeting itself but since we're kinda out of control here and out of time what I suggest from here we go straight to so we've got the 3d printer development group at network.opensourceecology.org uh, you should receive that in your welcome email the welcome email I don't think the new people all of them got their welcome emails yet but it's network.opensourceecology.org and you can go to I'm gonna paste that into the link right now if you haven't seen that that's where the discussion is going to take place as far as development discussion so go ahead right there click on that that's the network uh, we keep our discussion thread all in there so uh, that's that's where we communicate for ongoing communication you also have the email from everybody who's uh, who's joined a meeting you you've got everybody else's email so you can also feel free to email people but just keep all the discussion on um, public as in on the network that open source ecology org page so that everything is all the paper trails are in public so you don't have to go through your mailbox regarding discussions so that's about it for now so this is, so what you're seeing here people is we're kind of growing here we're gonna have to Kind of figure this out how we how we go into this and probably the best thing to do is to divvy up into working groups because yeah i mean it kind of seems that uh more than 10 people it kind of gets out of control uh, so probably working teams small working teams like six or so people uh six to twelve people it's probably the right idea and since we're making the road by walking here we'll see how it evolves and um move forward with that so separate groups on network to organize Abe says and that's actually a good comment I'm gonna show that if you wait let's see are you seeing wait am I sharing my screen no I'm not so you guys are not seeing oh man I thought this whole time I was sharing my screen okay but the idea is that there are already some groups there there's um we need to probably start a new one for the right now we're keeping everything in the 3d printer development page but we already actually have pages set up for the power cube human resources and eco tractor but there's not much not much going on there yet but um, let's just keep going on a 3d printer development for a little bit um, it's kind of get start getting tricky to keep track of all those groups um, let's you know let's let's try to let's try to keep the discussion here still so far it's been manageable like the volume of discussion there hasn't been overwhelming so it's kind of still 
doable to follow up with stuff but pretty soon like once we, yeah I'm kind of reluctant to go to a new group because then we gotta tra track multiple ones so I guess I gotta do that um, let's try that for just keep going here at the 3d printer group for a little bit until we it gets out of control if that's okay let's just try that for a little more uh, I think that should be yeah okay so I'm gonna stop stop sharing yeah I'm gonna cut out my video yeah um, yeah let's just try to keep on the 3d printer for now I mean I know we're gonna have to set up new groups but let's just try to milk this for a little bit more while we still can um, and probably split split away uh, sometime soon but yeah we're growing so we're we're gonna get that going soon okay so that, that's a uh, wow that's a that's a meeting and a half more people than ever before people so that's good um, so I think I'd like to wrap up at this point this is uh, this is good for now uh, things are growing things are good unless you have any pressing questions I think we should call it a day here um, Is the, is the meeting tomorrow going to use this same Jitsi link? Yeah, let's do this. I, th I think this is pretty good in terms of um, it, it seems like it works a little better than Google Hangouts. So let's use this from now on. We've officially migrated to Jitsi, which is a good thing because Jitsi is open source. And they also have this Jitsi kind of um, like a webinar thing where more people can get on. So I'm going to try to see if I can get that set up. Um, there's definitely in a Jitsi project there's more software that can let us do this more effectively but yeah I think we gotta start looking at a better solution because I was cutting out uh, that's not good and that was 12 people I was cutting out all the time that hasn't happened before and then I wasn't really able to share my screen well so we're gonna we're gonna need to do something better I'm not you know I'm not sure what 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 that solution is hopefully Jitsi might be doable but for the meeting tomorrow let's just do that and um, I would say for next week because yeah I think it's kind of getting a little overwhelming with so many people uh, unless we figure out something better let's try let's possibly um, split the teams up again so the people who are doing the the 3d printer focus do the Monday and then a Tuesday we can do the CNC torch table and extruder focus so yeah uh, we're growing and I think that's that's a good thing to do unless we find some other better solutions which I encourage you guys to think about how to do that alright so with that said I think we can wrap up unless there's any other pressing questions we can take it on onto the 3d printer development group um, as well as the email and I'll follow up with providing the instructions regarding the simplification of all the library parts there as we talked about so uh, for the people meeting tomorrow we'll see you tomorrow and for the people on a 3d printer uh, we'll communicate offline anyone ha have any other questions or going going gone Okay, with that said, thanks a lot, everybody. This is good. Um, we'll figure this out, how to do this really efficiently. And we'll see you either tomorrow or next week. And we'll communicate on email and on a 3D printer development network page. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. And the recording is going to get up online as soon as I post this on YouTube. So I'll send it out to everybody. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thank you.